Technology. My name is Jeff Phelan. I'm an Applications Engineer with the Single Cell Battery Charge Management Group at Texas Instruments. <clears throat> There's abundant energy in our environment. Some examples of energy sources are light, motion, body heat, and RF. The challenge is to convert that ambient energy into usable electrical energy to power an application. Technology is reaching the point where we can make practical, useful systems down to the milliwatts or even lower range. And at that range, it becomes possible to harvest some energy out of the environment. So there are the obvious things like utilizing light. For example, I show a 100 watt light bulb here. And in fact, it's interesting to note that a human dissipates about 100 watts as well. All we need to do is be able to har harvest 100,000th of the power from a light bulb or from your body in order to run a practical application like a body temperature sensor or a pulse sensor or some other biosensor. What are some of the emerging ap applications which are utilizing energy harvesting technology? Tire pressure monitoring is an obvious place where harvestable energy exists and replacement of a battery is costly and power cords are not feasible. There have been discussions that replacing the tire pressure sensors on a Lexus car costs about $400. Imagine the cost savings in this case if the batteries in the Lexus tire pressure sensor never needed to be replaced for the life of the car. As mentioned before, portable electronic devices is a key area where extending runtime is desired. These could be cell phones, multimedia players, handheld radios, point of sale scanners, portable medical equipment, tools, electric razors, etc. In emerging nations, changing of a cell phone is charging, excuse me, of a cell phone is problematic since power sources are not readily available. Here, energy harvesting becomes necessary and is cheaper than installing an entire electric grid. The three pictures structure of the structure and the wireless sensor network and smart buildings are related to wireless sensor networks. These are distributed networks that monitor physical parameters such as stress and fatigue for buildings and bridges, temperature, moisture, and humidity for offices, as well as for wineries and farms for precision agriculture. Wireless sen sensor networks also find application in factories to remotely monitor motors or other equipment or processes. A remotely distributed self-powered wireless network would seem to have a wide variety of applications from consumer to industrial government as well as military. Today we're going to look at the different energy harvesting sources, including solar, thermoelectric, uh, and vibration. We'll also talk about the different system architectures for the applications, whether they that system require only a rechargeable battery or storage element, or a hybrid system which has not only a rechargeable storage element but also a non-rechargeable element in case there are significant dark times where no energy can be harvested. Then we'll look at the ideal features of an energy harvesting power management IC. And finally we'll take a look at the options available for the different storage elements and the pros and cons of each. In deciding which energy harvesting technology to utilize, one needs to review the various potential energy sources available, which are light, thermal, vibration, and RF. Out of the various technologies available for energy harvesting, solar is most widely used and has the highest estimated potential energy for harvesting from 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared outdoors to indoor lighting with an estimated 0.1 milliwatt per centimeter squared. Thermal energy is the next highest potential energy generation source and can be acquired from sources such as from thermal sources from our bodies or heat generation by appliances or machines. Vibration energy is a potential source as well, but its potential energy generation is less than light and thermal sources. Even though these even though we can retrieve energy from electrical signals transmitted wirelessly, estimates of harvested energy are, are low and likely not a viable energy harvesting source presently. So let's briefly talk about the details of a few of the harvesters, starting with solar cells. <clears throat> solar cells are composed of an array of PN junctions and operate on the photovoltaic effect. When light is incident on the junction, photons with energy larger than the energy band gap of the material are absorbed in the material and generate electron hole pairs. These carriers are separated by the presence of the electric field in the junction and create current that is proportional to the incidence of solar irradiation. The cell can be simply modeled as a current source in parallel with the diode. 
the shunting resistance models leakage and the series resistance models contact resistance. The blue line on the plot shows the current versus voltage characteristics. Increasing illumination increases the source short circuit current and has a slight effect on the open circuit voltage of the cell. From this information we can also plot the power as a function of voltage. This plot makes intuitive sense since the power is zero at both ends where either the voltage or current is zero. We can also see that power is a maximum at a given voltage and current. This is the maximum power point of the cell and is a function of the temperature of the cell, incident power, and load. So having electronics which is able to operate the cell at its maximum power point is important. Note that the maximum power point of most solar cells is typically between 70% and 80% of the open circuit voltage. And also note that you can connect the solar cells in either series or parallel. In series, you will end up with a higher voltage, but the shading of one cell will decrease the efficiency of the entire string, whereas connecting them in parallel will result in a lower voltage, which will probably have to be boosted in order to power current electronics, but shading will only affect one cell. This slide shows a solar panel IV curve at different levels of irradiation, and you can also see that the maximum power point stays roughly the same uh, until you get down to very low light sources such as indoor ambient light. This side further drives home the point that the solar panel maximum power point varies with temperature. Some common solar cell types include amorphous silicon based, crystalline based, and more recently the disensitized DSCC type which are flexible and can be molded into various uh, shapes and sizes. And now we see an example small solar cell data sheet. This is from the company uh, Ixis and we can see that depending on where, which configuration we choose either uh, one series 12 parallel or three series 4 parallel <coughs> we get different values for the open circuit voltage, uh, short circuit current, and uh, also different uh, maximum output power. Thermoelectric elements can be used to harvest ambient heat energy. When a temperature difference is applied across the two ends of a thermoelectric device, an electric voltage is generated through the Seebeck effect. The basic construction unit of a thermal harvester is a thermocouple. This thermocouple is composed of an n-type material electrically in series with a p-type material. When a temperature difference is applied across the material, heat begins to flow from the hotter to the cooler side. In the process, the energy from the applied heat allows the free electrons and holes to move and form an electric potential and current flow if there is a closed circuit. Commonly used thermal harvesters for power generation consist of P and N doped bismuth telluride owing to its superior thermal properties. One PN leg of this material generates around 0.2 millivolts per Kelvin difference between the hot and cold sides. An equivalent circuit is shown in the next slide. And to boost the output voltage and get more power, uh, many of these legs are connected electrically in series and thermally in parallel to form a thermopile. For a 10 centimeter per square device, this series combination provides 23 millivolts uh, per Kelvin of temp difference. Electrically, the thermal harvester can be modeled as a voltage source in series with a resistance where the open circuit voltage can be expressed uh, as uh, S delta T, where S is the Seebeck coefficient of the material. The resistance arises from the metal interconnects and the resistance along the pellets. Uh, for body-worn applications for 2 to 3 K of temperature uh, difference is possible, the thermal element only outputs 50 to 75 millivolts of open circuit voltage. Next we see some TEG characteristics um, from a device from Tellurex um, and you can see this particular device gives open circuit voltages up to 450 millivolts for as little as 20 degree Kelvin difference and also maximum powers up to 
2.5 milliwatts with a 10 degree difference. And another excerpts from the Micropelt MPG D751 with higher open circuit voltage output and maximum powers. And next is an example to EG data sheet showing for that Micropelt device. Uh, you can see the size in millimeters of that device uh, as well as more of the uh, thermal characteristics and power outputs depending on the load on the output of the device. Electromagnetic energy harvesting uses a magnetic field to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. A coil attached to the oscillating mass traverses through a magnetic field that is established by a stationary magnet. The coil travels through a varying amount of magnetic flux, inducing a voltage according to Faraday's law. The induced voltage is inherently small and thus therefore be increased to viably source energy. Methods to increase the induced voltage include using a transformer, increasing the number of turns of the coil, and or increasing the permanent magnetic field. However, each is limited by the size constraints of a microchip. Note that because the electromagnetic vibration harvester types uh, are an AC output in order to be used in an electric circuit, we do have to add a full bridge rectifier in order to rectify the voltage coming out. And using that particular rectifier will reduce the maximum power that you can achieve uh, from the vibration source. And here's another example of an uh, electromagnetic vibration harvester of its slightly different type. In this particular slide, it's important to note that the maximum power will occur at the device's resonant frequency. And once you're outside of that particular resonance for that uh, moving mass, uh, the power drops off dramatically. Using piezoelectric elements is a popular way to harvest ambient mechanical energy. An input vibration applied onto a piezoelectric material causes mechanical strain to develop in the device, which is converted to electrical charge. The equivalent circuit of the PE harvester can be represented as a mechanical spring mass system coupled to an electrical domain as shown. Here, the elements on the left model the mechanical properties of the device. The mechanical domain is coupled to the electrical domain through a transformer that converts strain to current. On the electrical side, CP, C sub P represents the plate capacitance of the PE material. At or close to resonance, we can transform the whole circuit to the electrical domain where the PE element when excited by sinusoidal vibrations can be modeled as a sinusoidal current source in parallel with a capacitance CP and resistance RP.